Hey guys, this is I'm me reviewing Arrow 201, the season 2 premiere of Arrow, titled City of Heroes. If you guys enjoy the video, hit the like button down below, this guy for new, notifications on, jump right to the Arrow review. We opened up with what following the events of the Glades being destroyed and where everyone's at. Oliver's back on Leon New. He went there after not being able to save Tommy in the Glades. Uh, everyone's presuming that, or assuming, sorry, that the Hood is dead, or that he died in the Glades when it all came down, because everyone knew that he was fighting Malcolm Merlin, and Malcolm Merlin's in his room dead as well. Obviously, he's not, <laughs> but... To everyone, Malcolm Merlin is dead, and the Hood killed him, and then the Hood died in the Glades. But obviously, he's alive, <laughs> just not to the public eye at this point. Uh, Dick and Felicity end up going to Lee and Yu, jumping out of a plane to get Oliver to come back. Um, they make up an excuse that the companies can be taken away from Oliver and his family if he doesn't do something. But the main priority, why at least Dick wants them to come back... Is to stop these three cop hat, copy hat, copycat vigilantes that have stepped up after the vigilantes' appearance, the hood's appearance. Um, except instead of them using bows and arrows, they're using guns. <laughs> and they killed the mayor. They went to the DA. Laurel stepped in and she had a gunpoint in her face. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, I would decide to come back to Starling. Uh, we got a mention of blood. Who, if you know season two, you know he's plays a somewhat big role in the season. Um, he's someone from the Glaze trying to help the city the way that Oliver did as of Hood. Obviously, you know, not in the light of night or the dark of night, but in the light of day. Um, Isabel Rosetch, which again, big role in this season as well, was introduced and is trying to take the company from Oliver. The and Royce relationship has advanced over the last five months. Uh, between season one, season two, the time period, I'm pretty sure it was five months. And uh, Roy is going out in the streets in the Glades, fighting crime, <laughs> trying to, uh, again, still uphold what was set up in season one, which was originally to save them, and now he wants to do what he does, save lives, this is what he does, so he wants to do that too. Makes sense, in a way. <laughs> uh, the three copycat vigilantes... After killing the mayor and all that, there was a news report saying that Oliver came back. They got pissed off that um, Oliver was in the headlines and not them. Which, I think in uh, 2013, <laughs> that probably was accurate. Um, and you can still argue today's world, it is still pretty accurate. Like, if we have a high-profile celebrity... And there was a, you know, a shooting that happened in a city. It, media will most likely cover the celebrity <laughs> <laughs> and not the shooting right away. It will always be that famous person, whether it's a politician or not, and then the shooting. <laughs> so it, it's very accurate for today's world. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was something. Um, but they got pissed off that they were in the headlines. They decided to go after Oliver now and the Queen family. Also, because Queen Cassandra backed the earthquake machine that destroyed the Glades. So they're going to go after Oliver and his family, which includes Thea. Obviously, because Mora is out. She's in prison already. Um, so they're holding grudges because of what happened in the Glades. And they're trying to do what the hood set up, which was to, which was to get justice the non-lawful way, which is by murdering people. Um, why they killed the mayor, I don't think it was ever explained, but I'm assuming it was tied to the Glades. Um, prior to its destruction or something, I don't know. But uh, that would be my normal assumption. You know, I don't think it was brought up, but I could be wrong. Uh, Thea hasn't seen Mora since, and she's in prison now, by the way. Mora's in prison for everything she confessed to in 123. 
Uh, he hasn't gone to see her. Alvar just came back. He wants to go see her. Uh, I think before the scene where Thea said she didn't see more as recently. Um, about the company and all that. Thea's glad to see Alvar. And... Laurel ended up joining the DA office. We learned that. Point in the rise of where Laurel had a gun shoved in her face after saving the DA. And uh, Quinn's now an officer, uh, a beat cop, not a detective after everything he did with the vigilante, working with him and all that. And again, at this point, people don't know how they know how was back, but they don't know the hood's back because he doesn't want to be the hood, which ends up not being a good thing later on in the episode because the three copycat vigilantes break in the Queen Consolidated where Alva Wilson and Dig and Isabel are, Isabel Rosech are, as they're discussing uh, company terms and all that, and Isabel trying to take the company, they break in, uh, they shoot at the place, they took one guy out, or at least knocked him out, um, and then Alvar got Isabel Rosech out of there, Fussy knocked another one out, again, not kill, knocked him out, and then Oliver grabbed Felicity and jumped out the window down to another floor. And we didn't see Dig, but he made it, obviously, out of that. Um, and Oliver still convinced that he can't be the vigilante anymore because of Tommy. With what Tommy saw Oliver as, which is a cold-blooded murderer and somebody he didn't even recognize. Which is why Oliver doesn't want to be the vigilante anymore. And Felicity and Dig were... Now, this is a scene that I didn't really, like, what were they thinking when writing this? <laughs> I think it was Dick and Fussy who both said to Oliver at Queen Kassad they have to hold fight scene in that half. Fight. <laughs> I say fight very loosely. Um, uh, they said that Oliver could have taken them out if he wasn't so hell-bent on not being the vigilante. That whole scene, no matter whether Alva was eventually or not, um, I don't think he would have done that <laughs> because there are other people in that room, unless they were killed already. But even though if they were murdered, Alva said several times that he wasn't going to kill. <laughs> so it, it wouldn't add up with what he was wanting. He did bring that up in that scene. But... The thing is that there are so many people on that floor and that could be coming up to that floor. If you were to knock them all out, there'd be tons of questions as to how they even got knocked out. <laughs> so it wouldn't have been a smart move to do in the first place to go down that route. Oliver started caring about the body count since Tommy died. He wasn't doing that prior. Um, as because again, what Tommy said to Oliver and what he thought of him. Being the vigilante. Morris suggested to take Queen Sade back to Oliver. She could call in family. And Oliver assumed that was Thea. was actually Walter that Oliver called in. Who actually funded Oliver a ton of money. From the bank that he works at. He's a CFO of it. And that Oliver got the company back. But he's also going to be working close with Isabel Rosetch Because they're now company whatever now. <laughs> Company frenemies, we'll go with that. Um, <laughs> Roy uh, and Thea were at Verdant, and the copycat hood archers, whatever, not archers, copycat vigilantes show up um, in Verdant looking for Alvar. They end up taking Thea. Roy attacks one of them, knocks him out, knocks a hand off, which means that this guy has lost a hand. Um... Through military service, we find out a couple minutes later. But he did lose his family to the Glades, the earthquake machine and all that. So that's their motive behind this. Then we learn that uh, they end up taking Thea. Oliver finds out he's pissed off. He suits up again. He gets a new bow, a compound mechanical bow. Which was seen in season 2, 3, 4, 5... And yeah, season two, three, four, and five was the compound bow. 
and then season six, seven were the um, recurve bow, and then season eight was season one bow. So <laughs> I remember that. Um, of many things from era, I remember, but that was one of them. <laughs> um, plus he got an address for the Kaiba Cat vigilantes and where Thea is, and Oliver plans to kill the Kaiba Cats for taking Thea, but he doesn't end up doing it. He shows up, takes two of the guys out, and before Oliver showed up, one of the guys said that he had a sister that died in the glaze that was Thea's age and wouldn't be right to murder her, but... Some of them didn't care because she was connected to Mora. And in that scene, Thea understood why Mora did what she did. That it was to protect her family and it was horrifying at the same time to do. But she did it anyways. Uh, Oliver ended up saving the uh, copycat vigilantes after shooting them off a ledge. And brought them up. Again, Malcolm's resumed dead. Oliver visited Tommy's grave. And Laurel blames Vigilante for all of what happened. The Glaze, Malcolm Merlin, Tommy's death, these copycat Vigilantes, all of it. She blames the Vigilante for all of it. Um, so I don't remember the exact route Laurel took this season, but I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> but uh, very clear that Laurel will be going after the Vigilante and no one else this season. So... <laughs> um, Isabel owns 50% of the stock of Consolidate at that point. is before Walter came in and helped. Oliver said that he doesn't want to be called a hood anymore. And this is when the arrow was born. Um, Roy was in the glades when Thea called him. Uh, the scene before, the scene I just brought up. And sees a girl being ganged up on the glades. He gets a girl out attacking and then this vigilante, this woman in black, shows up, and it's Sarah. We don't know Sarah at this point in the show, but it is Sarah Lance, aka the Black Canary, before she died, and then Laurel took over, and then she died, and Earth 2 Laurel took over, and then we got 10 different variations of Laurel Lance as the Black Canary. <laughs> but the point is, <laughs> is that this is the start of Sarah Lance being the vigilante in Arrow. Um, so, yeah. And with the flashbacks, a um, few things I remember was that Slade's mask was seen with an arrow in it because it was in present day. It was straight up setting up Deathstroke and everything else that followed. Um, we had a whole case of people being on the island that just somehow got there. Uh, so, yeah, N nothing really interesting, but... It was okay. But the episode was good. It was a very good premiere um, for the Arrowverse in that day and age, I think. As the later premieres got a lot better. I think season 5, 6, and I want to say 7 and 8 premieres were far better than season 2. But um, I have to rewatch them to say that for my opinion to be 100% confident on that. But it was a good premiere. Um, some little things that drove me nuts, <laughs> but it, it was a good premiere, and season two, as I said in other videos, prior to doing air reviews, season two was my favorite season, or second favorite, third favorite, second or third favorite, <laughs> uh, after season five, and possibly season eight, uh, it's 50, 15 on season eight, because... It's either my second favorite or third favorite, but the thing is, is that season 5, season 8, season 2, I think are the best seasons in the show. Um, I season 8 the last, so, you know, there's going to be some bias there, but... <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, um, as of right now, air reviews will remain Mondays. I don't plan on doing, like, two air reviews a week, um, at least for the rest of the year, which we have, like, four or five weeks left. <laughs> Um, the week of Christmas, I will not be uploading at all that week. Uh, coming into 2023, which is again crazy that we're even saying that right now. <laughs> uh, I should have an air review out that first Monday. I think it's January 2nd or something. I don't know what the exact date is. And then we'll continue with air reviews and go on from there. So, again, I might upload two reviews in December, like a week for three weeks. I don't know, though. It just depends what's going on. 
But, um, yeah. And with Flashes 9 coming up in 2023, we don't know when because CW hasn't released a fall schedule yet for whatever stupid reason. Um, I would assume it's in February or March. And that's my number one assumption. That will be taking place on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Unless they change the air date for The Flash again. Which I really don't think they would. Because um, they changed it once. They shouldn't change it again for a new final season. Keeping on Wednesdays and Thursdays will be promo breakdowns for me. So, yeah. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. And that's the next video. Bye, guys.